why does rejection hit women bad? Because I mean, even a mid to low to average to ugly to hideous to whatever woman still gets options, still gets men that talk, try to want her, even if it's just for her body. So she she can like most men are very easy and predictable. Women are like when shit happens. Women are not used to being broken up with, left, rejected, friend zone. As listen, especially we talking about she bad, like she bad with a body, with you name it. I'm telling y'all, don't even get me started, brother. Why do girls get mixed signals, woman, and they fucking with me, and the next day not? What what is a mixed signal? What is a mixed signal? Please be specific. I be confused about these when y'all talk about certain things. How do you fuck without nothing and not get blue ball? Pain is real. I think, like, me personally, I feel like. I don't. I haven't had blue balls in forever, bro. Like, I like like years, probably, bro. And I fuck bitches without nothing. Like, and I don't remember like, oh man, I should like I don't, I just don't I don't. I feel like I haven't had blue balls in years. Isn't it, is that like a teenager thing or something? I don't, I don't know. Am I the only one? Like I haven't had blue balls in years, bro. Like I can't I can't remember the last time I was like. Oh, man. No, you're not. I, I thought I was tripping or something. Like, bro, I, like, you nigga said blue balls. I'm like, what? Um, Like when they flirt, flirt back shit, but the next day on some cold shit. Um, what's the cold shit? That's what I, that's really what I mean when I say, um, what's the mixed signals? What's the cold shit, though? What's specifically cold? Like, this was... She did this and that was cold. Or this happened and then I was like, that was weird. That was different. What's the cold? Like I'm, I'm like y'all elaborate. Cause what's cold to you might not be cold to me. Like I like I do not text every day. So let's say I saw a woman Monday and we didn't text till next Monday and then saw each other next Monday. Like, I wouldn't care. Like, I wouldn't look at that as like, oh my God, she's giving me mixed. I wouldn't even be caring. Like, I don't think like that. Like, I'm just real shit, bro. Yeah, bro, she playing with you, drop. Like, like. But I, I know that if I was messing with a woman and, and she gave, she's like, played with me a little bit or like did some weird shit, cut. I'm, I'm telling y'all. I'm so serious. I'm so, like, bro, I've cut women off for less. For less, I was a known intolerant. I listen. I was so like the funny part was, I had reputations in high school, right? Being a fuck boy, being a player was one of them. But it was also rumors about like, like I wouldn't talk to certain girls, and some of them were crazy and just not accurate. Like I remember this one girl told me that she heard that I would cut a girl off if she wore sweatpants. And I was like, did you believe that? And she hesitated. And I was like, oh my God. Wow. But it's like, yo, like, I've never been that strict. Like, I'm like, I'm never, but like, yo, I literally would be no, like, oh, I'm done. Like, I don't care, bro. I never, I never had, like, I never dealt with attachment issues, bro. I, I don't know why. I'm kind of glad for it because it always has kept me in a good position. I have, but this is the thing, chat. I do. I used to have like an overprotective jealousy kind of vibe to me. Like, like if you my bitch, I feel like you shouldn't even hug niggas a certain kind of way. It's still like this to this day. It's just that I'm not. I'm not super like aggressive with it like I was before. And the only reason for that is, I just know how to play my role. But once you officially like like once that title once it's like official like once shit is established, it's boundaries that need to be respected in a, in any relationship. But for me, back then, I used to be like that if, if, if a bitch was fucking with me, just fucking with me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I was crazy, man. I was crazy. Oh, boy, I was crazy. Oh, my God. I remember I was a freshman. I was talking to this um, Dominican chick, right? Um, and I knew a lot of people in my school, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
And if like my man's like took a picture of her hugging some some junior, mind you, you older, like you you older trying to mess with. But you know the baddest chicks in the grade always could get the older like niggas or whatever. Like or the older niggas would still try to mess with the younger baddies. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was that because she was pretty. She was she was tough. She was one of the nice Jones in the grade. So I'm fucking with whatever. And my man's had like sent me a picture of like them hugging each other a certain kind of way. Dog, when I tell you I snapped on the bull, I don't even, this is corny shit though. Like looking back at it, looking back at it, she should have been cut. Like why would you ever let a nigga do that to you? That's, this is how I think now. But back then I'm like, yo, I went at him crazy, bro. And then the funny part was, he ended up being cool as fuck. Like it ended up just being resolved. It was just like a, he's like, hey man, you know, like, like he was one of them, um, Weeb type of like dudes like like he wasn't even like on that type of demon time like he was just like Because I came at him crazy. He tried to like act like fake defend himself, but he was actually cool, man But he was it actually like resolved kind of kind of solid Why you hug that nigga more than two seconds? No, I'm talking about like like hands over the neck crazy and Niggas should get daps Or like like come on man. Keep it thorough. Keep it playing man. Y'all know niggas be like holding on to anything, bro. I ain't saying that's y'all, bro, but I, I know how I know how I know how desperate some niggas are. Especially when you messing with bad bitches, right? Niggas will play fake best friend, fake friend, whatever, for so long that even the girl herself would be like, no, nah, like, you know, he's just my friend. Not saying guys and, and women can't be friends, right? Cause I could be friends with a woman and not want to fuck secretly. I could be friends with a woman and not have a secret agenda. Waiting for her to give me a chance. Like, I could do that. So I could be a woman's friend. And her boyfriend has nothing to worry about. Now, if she likes me, that's different. Like, if th that's on her end. But for me, he ain't got, like, I'm not snaking him. Or, like, I could be a woman's friend and be completely reserved and, and have my self-control. But I know some niggas ain't like that. Really, I feel like most niggas ain't like that. Most niggas is going to be a woman friend. And they only being her friend because they can't be her boyfriend. Pillow talk. I mean, I done seen it all. I mean, I done seen niggas this they on homies to bitches. I done seen, like, bro. And then the girl go tell the nigga anyway. That's what niggas don't even worry about. Like, when you ain't keeping it there. Chris, Chris B. Jr., I appreciate the 15 months, man. I appreciate that. Because you imagine a nigga think he getting over on you by trying to down talk you to the woman. She already so obsessed with you, it don't even matter. Did she come and tell you he said something? I'm telling you, cornballs just never win, man. They don't. Child, I ain't seen way too much, man. Way too much, way too much in my days, man. Niggas really, niggas, niggas really do crazy shit over women. Crazy shit over women. Like, bro, I'm telling y'all, man. The best thing you can do is keep it player. Play your role. Just be smooth, man. Let... Always let the woman do what she want to do. She's going to do what she want to do anyway. She's always going to be with who she wants to be with. Trying harder, doing more, trying to impress, it's only going to make you saudier. And it's like, she could smell you trying so hard. She could smell you trying to make up. On the same, in the same breath though, she can tell when you don't give a fuck. She can tell when, when if she walked out that door, you wouldn't chase her. You would actually hold the door for her and let her walk out. She can, she can smell these things, bro. And she may test for it early on. And maybe she don't even have to test for it. You just so obviously let it be known. Why am I telling y'all this? Because you got niggas that who think they want to compete over another man for a bitch. But at the same time, guess what? You know when a situation you will win? Angel GMF, I appreciate the two months. You know where you might win? You might win if the guy is so nonchalant. That she compares how you treat her and how he treats her, and she thinks he don't like her anyway. So then she goes with you because you're reliable. <clears throat> Screaming out who won and fill my pockets with bodies. I got him. The chopper right by me. 84 show. 
My original question: Why you, was why do you think girls could flirt back and reciprocate your energy one minute, but then the next day act totally different? Oh, I asked you what was the cold behavior specifically. What was different? What what specifically was it? You said like late. Oh, he said like late replies, not reciprocating energy and shit like that. Okay. Like I, I'm I'm this is just me, and I'm gonna explain why, cause I can stand on anything I feel and think. I do not care about texting. I don't. I could text a woman and she could text me back a day later and I wouldn't care. Cuz I'm probably like I don't I just me it never came to I never cared when it came to texting, bro. Why do I say that? Because phones have only existed for like the last 20 whatever years, right? So when people make this bro she seen it she on her phone all the time. I'm not entitled to a response. I don't give a fuck. She could be trying to pretend she don't care. See, niggas don't know how... Listen, I give y'all a game for for certain certain situations, right? Let me give y'all some game on this one. She could be trying to prove to you she don't care, when really that's an indication that she do care because she's trying to pretend she doesn't. So she's trying to take longer. She on your dick one second, and she's like, all right, let me not let him think I like him too much. You got to be able to see through these kind of things or you're going to do some shit like you're doing and you thinking it's mixed signals when she's trying to make it mixed signals. But if you see through it anyway, you know what to look for. So I would never look at it and be like that. But let's go back to the phone original statement I was making. Phones have only been existing for like whatever long time. Could you imagine bitching about her texting back or such and such 40 years ago? Obviously, it's not 40 years ago, but my point being is why would I let such an insignificant new thing ruin relationships, ruin the stability of a relationship when relationships have existed before a phone. So I don't really look at the phone as an important thing. Unless unless it's like, um, you know, I'm on the way to her. Like, l- unless we're communicating and it requires immediacy. Unless it requires immediacy. My brother Cheese, she slay in the building, baby. I, I love you, boy. What's good, gang? Love her with the five... Gifted baby, B. I appreciate you. We had a good Valentine's. You got beautiful flowers and roses. You know what I'm saying? Look at all the love, man. Love is spreading love, chat. We love to see it. Love, bro. Keep doing you on top of this shit, man. We got to work for it, brother. We got to put that work in like a jumping jack. You know what I'm saying? You know what type of time it is, man. But like I was saying, chat, like, I just don't, I can never see myself. Getting mad because a woman didn't respond. Like, I just not, like, I just don't give a fuck, bro. I just don't. And, and at the same time, though, chat, lover with the big two moms, man, Fred with the 11 months, y'all going crazy, man. I love the love, chat. Just make me so happy. It's just a great day. In the same sense, chat, you know what that means, though, chat? Guess what, chat? That means. That if I'm with a woman, she has to feel she has to think the same way about texting. Like I wouldn't be able to be with a woman who wants me to text her back fast and all the time. The same way I can't be with a woman, or or a woman she can't be with me, if she don't like that I don't care about texting. Like we have to equally think like that. So if you text back fast, if you like fast responses, if if it makes a difference to you. There's people out there and women out there that that think like that. Don't stress yourself out over a partner who don't like. It's, it's just, it's just, it's unnecessary to me. What's understood does not need to be explained, as they say. So when you say mixed signals is the next day she's responding late, it's like bro, I would never like if she's if I if I link with her in real life. And she on my dick. The vibes is high. We having fun. We laughing, kissing, whatever that we doing. And then she went home and didn't text me until like two days later. I wouldn't give like I really wouldn't care. I would just the next time we see each other, if that if that changed, if next time we saw each other in person, that's all I care about. Let let on the phone or in person. Because if, if you know what I'm saying, like I don't I don't really care. And even on the phone, like I don't have to call. I don't have to. It's not that big of a deal, bro. If you long distance. Obviously, this changes a little bit. Long distance is a little bit different. But if you're in a situation where you can you kind of see her every day or 
um, come across are kind of easy. It's, it's, like, I don't really look at Texans as a big deal. But let's say my girl lived in Antarctica. Like, <laughs> maybe Texan is more important. You know, phone calls is more important. That is so tough. Appreciate it, brother. Ah. Should you be worried of being too silly or bubbly? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he said bubbly happy. <laughs> he said always scared of letting myself just be to look stupid and mature childhood issue shit. Bro, if I was too happy and a woman left me because he was too happy, bye bye. What do you like? I think a lot of this internet jargon and a lot of these dating coaches has made y'all be so be so stiff. Y'all so stiff. So stiff. Y'all stiff, man. Y'all ain't no like Come on, man. How she man, this is the difference between me and you. She gotta like me for what she sees. She gotta like me for who I am. Cause I'm not gonna change. I'm going to be the same nigga the first day she met me to the, the day I go into the grave. My principles, my values, my, my, my like spirit as a person. I may change facial hair, weight. My money may increase. I may lose a bag. I'm just always going to be who I am. That's, and if she don't like who I am, she ain't going to like me at all. Or ever. she's never going to like me. I, I'm not modifying and shifting that. So, if, like, if I'm ha I'm a happy person, bro. Don't y'all see that? Any any blind date or IRL video y'all ever seen me on? I've always been smiling and laughing on the dates, have I not? People was like, yo, Cheyenne got you giggling. But, bro, I'm literally always like that. I'm, uh, bro, I literally am always laughing, bro. It's, it's, it doesn't take away from it being seductive. It, you know, it's, it's, balance and honestly i like to be more playful because i don't want i don't want to be it depends on the moment so i ain't gonna talk too much some more some moments the silence must speak louder than your words the eye contact the presence the tension some moments you know just just chilling man you just have you just you just always abps always be playing man always always be on your game but you know don't don't be faking and pretending, man. I just think that's weird. Like, what what happens when, like, you just with a partner and you slip up and you feel like they're gonna leave you? Why would you want to live like that? That just feels weird, bro. That's weird. <clears throat> I think if you at least owe anybody anything, you you owe you owe them who you are. Uh, and at the bare minimum, just be yourself. Can you break it down with the seduction? Break what down? What about it? What about it, brother? Speak directly. Speak plainly. Bang up. So I think you should put on your masculine more often. It's on. It's on. This is the thing, Chad. When I grew up, I was hearing things like it's a time and a place. It's times you shouldn't be laughing and smiling at all. Head on a head on a swivel, looking at every angle, every corner. If you in public, that's ninety nine point nine percent of the time, brother. You should always. That's nine. That's a hundred and ten percent of the time, actually. But you with your chick in the privacy of your home, and you like, you just nervous. You moving weird, gang. You scary. I would always say time and place. Yeah, man, we just don't have sayings anymore like we used to, man. I used to hear it, it takes a village to raise a child. You know, it's a time and a place. I used to hear so much shit nowadays. Everybody, now, now I just hear the same jargon of everything online. Just copy and paste, man. So bad. He's gonna be laughing at the funeral. 
That's why I'm glad I, I made videos how I did and broke down a bunch of variety of examples. I think that's one of the main factors. And even Duke De Dennis said this and when he reacted to my video. He said, you know, he helped me realize everybody got their own game. Everybody got their own game, bro. Like, you can't beat, you can't use my game like me. And I can't use your game like you. Ideally, you are your game. I'm my game. I don't have no game. I am my game. It's me. It, I am the game. I ain't playing no game. I ain't playing games. I'm not spitting game. I'm the game. It's who I am. Everything I do, everything I say, how I say it, why I said it, where I'm going with what I said. You know what I'm saying? Even the things I don't do should be a part of my game. Being too giggly. What? Why are men using these words? Why y'all keep saying this? Giggly, bubbly, happy? Like, this is my first day ever even reading these words in chat. You feel about this? Motherfuckers are scared to approach baddies. Don't realize you could be her secret type. Man, I don't give a fuck if I'm a bitch type or not. I'ma show her it's it's a it's a, a something she's never seen before. He ain't even my type, but I just like him so much more than I've ever liked the guy who I thought I would like. That's the win. Like damn, like he he changed my standard of man. Because of him, I don't even like the same men no more. He changed what I look for in men. He exposed me to something. It's like liking cereal your entire life until you have steak. Like, damn, steak this good? Or if you, let's say, you know, you don't eat meat or some whatever. But like, like, your favorite is your favorite until you have a new favorite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The best is the best until you see the best. No, that's real. Exactly. Like, I... I know I ain't a bitch type. She can't. She can bet. I know she ain't meet a nigga like me. How could she even? How could I even be her type? It would have to be my skin complexion, my height, my hair. It, it would have to be something completely superficial for for her. To, oh, that's my type. Who I am, what I, what the value I offer, the kind of guy I am, the, how I move. She can never say, "Oh, I damn, I just love men like that." Cause we rare. We rare as fuck. Statistic from a statistical standpoint, everybody else trying to be like everybody else. Hey, Todd, this is more of a life question. Why do you people speak indirectly when they find something they like or dislike? Do you recommend being straightforward or indirect with your approach? With it's when anyone's perspective, I feel like it's toxic and useless. Um, be yourself, man. Some people just are speak their mind, they speak directly, some people communicate. And articulate themselves where they can lay it smoother than others. Whatever you are, if you are naturally a blunt person, you just can't, you just speak your mind. Then be that. I would never tell a person who's blunt. Maybe you should be a little bit more careful with your words. And I would tell. And the only reason that you would get advice in this situation is if you are avoiding saying something, because some things need to be said. If it needs to be said, then say it. That's the bottom line. Giggly? What is giggly? Like, can a man be giggly? What is bubbly happy? Like, bro, I think you just... I think you just kind of, like, play the game with your homie so much that you don't even realize... Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know, bro. Like it's a com it's a completely different vibe when you want some. Sh I'm I'm about to make her smile, blush. I'm about to make her wet. I'm about to turn her on. I'm about to, whatever. Like it it's just a different vibe, gang. Like. You can be be or be yourself, bro. They saying they have a wide sense of humor. So what am I like? Just dull. I don't I don't find anything funny. I'm just not. Like come on, brother. Like, I'm making excuses, like, it's so fun to a goofy bitch, then. <laughs> Be goofy and goober. I feel like you young, I feel like younger people take the WRL Riz too seriously to the point 
They only driven for the win instead of being them exactly. I'm W Riz. Nigga, fuck if she like or dislike what I said. Like, she might. It, it ain't even established from that. She, she can't validate me or invalidate me. She can't stamp me or disprove me. She does not even have that power over who I am. It, to even give that standard is ridiculous. She ain't make me. She can't make me. That's what the internet... I think the internet just... Has a lot of uh, corny ways of creating validation. Yeah, that's all I say. Like my power does not come from that external bullshit. So why would it sit here? Oh, it's cool, it's flattering. It means something to you. She can fuck with me, but she can't fuck with me. I don't think that's the quote, gang. I think the quote is, she don't fuck with me. Nah, she can't fuck with me. So I don't know if you touched on this, but as we grow older and find more ways to do shit, do you think generals become obsolete in the future? Like the whole breadwinner, stay at home type mentality, having a world. I think on a just a general basis, I think things are getting so expensive that it's like, it's almost like the woman has to work in the house. Me, I, I'm i traditional, so ideally my woman, my woman wouldn't be working for a corporation or a job. If y'all have to do that, if y'all have to put things together and, you know, 50-50, by all means, that's your life, that's your household. Run it how you want to. Christian Chef, I appreciate the 13 months. Niggas took off the dollar menu at McDonald's. That's tough. Man, I remember having to split a sandwich with my mom one time, man. You got any pieces of philosophy you live by in daily life? Um, you know, let my next move be my best move, man. I love that line. Personally, that's been one of my favorites. Hey, yeah, pops, and stare that at me. Oh, God. That's before dishonor. Come on now. That's I don't even have to say that. Like I don't even have to think about that. Like conscious, I don't even have to. Straight up, death before dishonor, bro. What was the one monopoly quote you said yesterday? Um, take the risk or lose the chance. And that shit, that shit hits. How do you want other men to succeed when they are competition? Competing with me in what way? Competing with me in what way? Who's your favorite musician? As of right now, I'm probably Sade or Tina Marie. Smokey Robinson, Stevie Ray Vaughan. A lot of people I've been listening to recently. Um, what would you say is more effective? Looking for someone with the similar core values or teaching a person your values and morals in a sense. They'd be willing to hop on your program and let you take the lead. It could be both. I, I feel like you could get both. Like The person learns from you and picks up on how you move. I personally believe that if I'm messing with a person, there are certain things I should never have to teach them. Like, especially on morals. I think morals is the easiest one. Like, like it, I should never look at a person I know and say, I would never do that. Morally. Now, if we're talking about something personal, like an abortion, or, you know, I say I would never get an abortion and they say they would, that's them. But I mean, like, like, let's say I, I got a homie and he's still from his mom. Like, 
I would never do that. Like, so if my like you you couldn't be my homie. Like I, I like that's that's not even something I couldn't teach you. Like I couldn't teach you not to steal from your mom. Like you know that's that's what I mean. But at the same time, you could that same person who has the same morals and values as you, and y'all lined up, will still learn from you. It can still be about your program. It's not an either or. So when you say, would you rather have this or this? Neither. I'm gonna have what I want. So just what you should go for, what you want, right? Or what you need, or what you feel like you need, or feel like you want, whatever the case may be. What you plan out to get. And just stop underestimating yourselves. Yo, you wanna know something that's crazy? When you play yourself or underestimate yourself or 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 underestimate your own value or underappreciate yourself, everybody else will still use you for what you're worth. But by the time you realize it'll be too late. That's the craziest part. People will always use you for what you're worth and take the value you traded yourself for or gave whatever for. But by the time you realize it'll be too late. A job will hire you at half the salary you could have got if you requested a, a higher salary. Even though you're still as valuable to them as the higher salary. But they'll pay you the low salary. That's a pretty practical example. But even beyond that, you could be a, a man of value. Tall, handsome, whatever the case may be. And still, be a, and still turn out two cents. You can still do it. You can have all the money in the world, be a high top person and blah, 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 and still get played and still get finessed. Still. Not even knowing. You could have the mentality. You walk around like, man, I ain't got to sweat a hoe. I could replace a hoe before I chase a hoe. Have a new one before the sun come up. And and this other person knows you could replace them like that and they still finesse you like you ain't. You just don't even know. Thoughts on DDD situation? Boy. <laughs> Been there, done that, man. <laughs> Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Um, clearly, he got the locks. Because this girl made a public statement and, and stood by him. So, But, I, boy, I tell you, I've been there, done that, man. Oh, God. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Yo, but you know what it make me say? Personally, just speaking on the bad game, I just feel like, I feel like at this level, DDG should not be getting caught like that, bro. Like, he should just not be getting caught like that. I was getting caught like that when I was 16, 17. Like, I, bro, you, like, as a grown-ass man, bro, like, with money, with people around him, you gotta have, like, come on, bro, you just gotta be smarter than that. If you, listen... Y'all already know what I say. Keep it real. I don't even, you know, speak on, you know, whatever. It could have been him and his girl was off. So it's not cheating. His girl stayed by him. So what the fuck can anybody say? Because I've been in that position before. Like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, my point I'm making is, bro, if you want to fuck with other bitches or do some side to side shit, like, have her, have, only do it over the phone on FaceTime. Only like, come on, bro. We gotta move tighter than this. That's that's why I look at it now. Like, well, I, but like I said, I've been caught in them, bro. Listen, I told you, I've been I've been in a situation where a woman took a a woman I was messing with sent me a picture of a woman I was with at the mall. I done been snitched on because a chick I mess with got friends that go to the school and I mess with the school bitches that I mess with. Bro, I done been caught in so many shim sham and flam bams in 4K. Whatever. I, I I only ever not been like I never had a chick show a chick my messages. I never had like I never had that. But like I've had people record me with the chick and you know what I'm saying. I've been definitely caught in 4K. I ain't gonna lie, a couple times. But you ain't. I ain't never like I finesse my ways out. I done clutch them crazy ass situations. And um, at the end of the day, like, looking at DDG doing this now and being, you know, like, bro, like, nah, you got to tighten up, man. You can't you not get caught like that if that's how you're going out. And a Twitter DM, I feel like if I had clout and I had money and I wanted to fuck with other bitches, 
You would only be able to like I'm not saying shit like that and doing shit like that on social media, bro. A easy ass screenshot, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, I said what I said and I meant what I said. If that's how I'm carrying it, it is what it is. But like, you got a good girl. You got a great quality woman. Come on, man. Either keep it P or let it be. Either let her know, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to be in an exclusive relationship. Like, I, I, I want to fuck other bitches from here to here. Like, if we going to be together for a long time. You got to know what it is and what it isn't. Cause you might you gonna be a part you might you gonna be like my right hand like you gonna be closest to me I gotta what if what is this relationship founded on? It's founded on bullshit, and this ain't even speaking on DDG and Haley right now. This is real life shit. Like if you got a a chick that's just gonna be you gonna be fucking with for a long time and serious, and and you found that on some bullshit, lying, deceiving, and manipulating, it's founded on bullshit. Keep it P or let it be. Jessica 29. Are you are you the um the one that does art? Or a completely different Jessica? Keep it P or let it be. For real, man. That's what I learned from personally being a cheater, a finesser, a lying ass, manipulating ass nigga. Like I just bro, it's 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 it's, it's no type of old shit. <laughs> then when a girl you genuinely fuck with. Catch you doing something you knew you wasn't supposed to do. It's no more, it's no bigger. Oh. <laughs> and it ain't funny. It ain't funny. It ain't funny. I, I promise you it ain't funny. It ain't funny. I'm only laughing because I'm thinking back like how I used to be crazy finesse, bro. Completely different person. I suck at our LMAO. Okay, welcome to the stream though, still. I seen your name in the stream before. I just wanted to double check. Nigga smile tell me talk about Toxic Top, man, because it's like, oh, man. Ruthless. Ruthless days, brother. Ruthless days. It's true that him and Haley broke up. I don't know, child. I don't like paying attention to other people's lives. I really don't. But I seen the post. Ruby posted a private screenshot on social media. Come on now. I was having a debate with my friend. He said eighty dollars is the minimum to take the girl out on a date. That was ain't DCU prices. Streets don't forget, Tyson. How the streets don't forget. Forgive and not forget. I'm really living proof that a nigga could be a cheater and a finesse and really turn out to be a, a better man. I stand for that. I stand for that and I like to choose to be that. Real shit. Come tell you, niggas think they had it, bro. Niggas think they had it. Bro, I literally made a list of all the women I was talking to at one time. And it was 28. And that wasn't even when I was like on some cheating shit, cause technically none of them was my girlfriend. Like, it was I wasn't knowing that type of pillow talking, guaranteeing relationship type shit. Um, and I can't say I, I can't really say I fucked over some solid women, bro. Fortunately, any woman I've ever talked to, we're we there's no like we're not ops, we're not enemies. Like there's no we don't talk every day, we don't talk every month, we don't talk. Probably half a year or something like that, but it's no bad blood. Like I like it's. I don't have no enemies. I don't have no ops. I don't. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like oh that she hate me and blah blah blah. Like no, no. Even the ones that I've done have, have you know did some some nut shit too. Who is the main girl out of the 28? It's probably like three. And that was just because I probably knew them for the longest. Can I take a minute, but I tell you 
Has a girl ever cheated on you? No. I've never been broken up with, cheated on. Fortunately, you know what I'm saying? Knock on wood. It could happen. It could happen to anybody. I, it's just of my opinion that you can filter that out. Like, you can filter that out, bro. That's who I think. I, I, like, I, like, that's what I think, bro. Great, the toxic tie for him. Bro, why are y'all so infatuated? Why we can't talk about being a better quality man? Why we want to just go, oh, toxic this, oh, say this, or this? Why is that so much more interesting, bro? Why, bro? Y'all devious, man. Y'all really devious, bro. He said, nah, I want to be a whore. No, I'm not programming men that the more sluts you fuck, the, the badder bitches you fuck and make you a man. It don't. It's it's fun. But you'll look up and you ain't got nothing to show for it but a high body count. I don't know niggas that, that dedicate their whole time and just come, like life, damn near life force to fucking bitches and, and being lit. Not getting their money in order, not owning properties, not building an empire, not creating any type of impact on life or their life themselves. But all they amount to is how many bitches they fuck and the better the bitches they fuck. That's a very bad space to be in in life, if you ask me. And, and you know what's crazy? Something you don't know something crazy, chap. I I can sit here and say to y'all, or uh, most roster, most I ever had on my roster at once was 28. And then I can also, in the same breath, tell you, I had to learn to have zero women. And it was the most life changing shit I, I've ever realized. Have you ever fumbled a bad bitch? I don't know what y'all mean by fumble, bro. Nigga, I be putting them on God. Fumble. In a situation where you say you fumbled anything, that means you were the less, the lesser thing of value in a situation. That means you lost. Out of out of both of y'all going away from each other, you lost. You lose. You lost out. This nigga Ty cut a girl off before she leave him. To even assume like, brother, you don't, you don't, I, I don't know. You just, you just let me know something about you, bro. You like, you like the nigga that don't understand that a woman will bring up the relationship to you first if, when she really like you. You the nigga that try to put her in the relationship. What does that mean? What, did I, what are you talking about specifically? But what's the last thing you heard though? Did you learn stuff in college that you still use today in the little time you went there? I went there for four years. I was supposed to graduate this semester and I was just there last semester. Bro said in the little time you went there. <laughs> Yo. Um. What situation did you go through that had told you you have to have zero women? Well, it wasn't even really about the woman. It was, it was about how serious I took my time. And and the funny part was about literally having zero women is that I was still in environments and in situations where I was interacting with women that I could have if I wanted to. I literally remember, like, I remember I had an SAT program in the summer. I had a job. You know, I was doing things with sports or whatever. At the SAT program, it was it was chicks there. At my job, it was chicks there. And I and it still was like it, it wasn't like so it wasn't like I just like, oh leave me alone, woman. It just, it just was like choosing not to be like talking to them or making my life about it. Like like not caring. It's the basic way I can describe it. It's like I can still be around women, flirt women, whatever, but it's just not, I'm not, I'm not on some, yo, you trying to like slide back to the crib or call me tonight and I'm going to call you and I'm going to text you and like, 
It's just you just around them being yourself. Like, why is that? That's actually an easy thing to describe. But like, that should that should make sense. Going around with no no agenda, no purpose, just being me. I'm trying to finesse a girl, gave me her number, she got a boyfriend, but she keep texting me, telling me she got to be loyal, even though she on my body, I don't go about it. Well, I won't waste time. I tell her, call me when she wants some dick. If you keep trying to break the lock open, that's on you. See, what I do is put the opportunity there, because I'm the opportunity, not an option. Put the opportunity there and go live my life. I ain't trying to break no lock open and oh like damn I just gotta get her I gotta finesse it and I'm trying to finesse nigga I'm trying to I'm the opportunity I, I'm gonna let her know what it is and what it isn't. <laughs> we try to make your break down videos I upload them all the time. Gotta show me. Teach us an infinite money glitch. You think I know what infinite money glitch? Doing a book series again. I didn't think about it. What job would you want to do if you weren't doing social media? What I was doing, like, before I even started this medical school. Neuro, either something neuroscientist or you know, neurosurgeon. That's what majority of my college credits are in. That's what I was positioning myself to do. You read the human nature laws of human nature? No. Do you have a Patreon video talking about action slash being more assertive? Yes. Pick back up on the artist's seduction. Not that I thought of. How would I become more comfortable with my sexual side? What makes you uncomfortable about it? It's actually not a bad question. But what makes you more comfortable about it? <clears throat> Andrew Huberman? I know that is. Who or how did you just get have a game? What do you think game is though? That's the important part. What do you think it is? Cause if you're talking about a mouthpiece or communicating like directly, then that's different. You're talking about positioning. If you're talking about, you know, whatever the case may be, then that's different. No one can give you a mouthpiece. No one can give you this. You you gotta talk to. You gotta go out and get your work in. I give you an example. You would sit here and say, "Who or how did you get game?" Right? And I just had to describe this on a Patreon call today. I said, "Let's compare us right now." And, and he wasn't even talking about talking to women. He's talking about you know networking opportunities and you know engaging with people like that. And I said, "Let's just compare our human interactions." Right? I went to high school, almost 3,000 people was in the school. Across the street, another high school, all girls high school. The top of the block, transportation center, which attracts multiple high schools. One of them, which is also another all girls high school. I met, I had a job, multiple jobs at different malls, but one of the jobs was at the biggest mall on the East Coast, and I was working during the busiest days at that mall. And you sit here and ask me, why can I talk to women better than you can? I've probably talked to more, more, more women in a day than you have talked to in the last three years combined. You already, you're right, you already lost. You can't compete with me. Because I got that shit to the point where it's, it's not even like a, a, a something I had to turn on. It's just a constant, I'm always just constantly in, the, in these environments. And I'm always, it's just, it's normal to me. It's not even like, I don't even think of it like, all right, let me just, I just, it's, it's, it's like a habit. It's like a, 
It's you 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 already lost, bro. No, I stop comparing yourself to others. It ain't even about comparing yourself to me. The point is, I have more experience in these situations. It was not given to me. So when you say you don't have it and I have it, look at the difference in our experience. Like, yeah, bro, go outside, shoot, interact, and go. Experience takes time. Exactly. This is years. Years of comfortability, years of years of being able to recognize things in certain situations. I'm gonna give y'all some game. I got. I was talking to a guy on a Patreon call today about, and I really had to. That's this. This is what made me explain to him why I can recognize these things so quickly. And I told him about the mall, the school, the all this environment. Already in a big city that's small, right? <clears throat> we're not even including going downtown. We're not even including going to here and, and parties, and we're not even including that. We just including the situation I'm in, right? Not even we're not even including programs. We're not including none of that. Right? We just I was just talking about the school, the job, and shit like that. We're not even including being on the bus randomly. Like we're not even talking about that. We're not even talking about just walking outside or going to the park or hooping at the courts one day and then we're not even talking about that. I just I just talked about three areas, right? So me and the guy talking, right? And I'm talking to him about what I call checking people's temperature. Right, and I was like, "Yo, I can. You should be able to quickly recognize when you're communicating with another person. Where on the spectrum do they fall? Is this person more militant, more you know, strict, tough, real rigid, or are they like more loose, silly, playful, you know, whatever? And this is something you should be able to pick on relatively quickly. But at the same time, you can also test the waters and, and, and test them and see where you know they where they also stand in, in their temperament like their personality and the example i gave i said let's say i get pulled over right i could tell very quickly is this cop a asshole is this cop about to be a, a hard hit or is this cop about to be on hey man you were speeding dude like come on slow down and try not to I, I, it's ways that I can test immediately or quickly in a conversation to test his temperature, check that person's temperature. That's a specific example. And even, it's the same with women. It's the same with that. But not only about checking a person's, you know, checking their temperature and shit like that. A, a, a charismatic, charming, socially aware person knows that they can use their personality, their temperature to influence the other person's. But I may also say, see the example he, the example I wanted to use with the guy, I said, let's say you're talking about, um, you're at a networking event and there's these desks, there's these kiosks, this is the job, this is Microsoft and this is Apple, right? You wanna be an engineer for them. You got the, the guy that's at the desk for Microsoft and then the girl that's at the desk for Apple. And you wanna leverage your social skills to get a, get a, a relationship here. And you gauge both of their personalities uniquely, right? The Microsoft guy, real strict, real stern, real totalitarian, real militant, military kind of style personality. So this type of person, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it out. I'm, I, I, guess, I can guess that discipline is important to them. Hard work is important. So I may move them by marketing myself in a way that describes the hard work I put in, the discipline, the, the the persistency, the grit that I have, etc. Whereas though that may not move the woman at the Apple desk the same. She may take a, a humble, I persevered kind of story. I changed my life for the better kind of story. She may not, it may not move her to, for me to overemphasize my discipline and my ambition and my, and things like that. Cause that's not where her, her, her temperament is chat is this making sense and i'm the same person but i may dictate and manipulate certain things and articulate it with a different way to, to get a different impact and the more you interact with people the more this shit is just instinctual see i can explain this and it can make a lot of sense to y'all but you'll be put in a situation where you have to apply it or use it and you can't because you just you have not come across enough human beings 
I mean, just think that I've, I've come across thousands of people on a day-to-day basis in my high school alone, and then I'm going to work, and I'm coming across hundreds every day, unique, new beat, new people. So let's say I, my high school, I just get used to all the 2,500 people that's there, and then I go to work. I'm never going to meet a person that's the same. So I just have to adapt. I have to get quick. I have to get recognized things. I start noticing things naturally. Eugene, you ain't even ready. You ain't even ready to catch certain things. You haven't even been exposed to certain things that I can catch or even know to look for. This is why you have to interact. You have to go for them. You have to see things. You have to you have to be you have to prove what you think wrong by seeing that there's more. And that's what I seen. That's why I look at situations and I may go on a pineapple show and she say pineapple for my age, but I may see in real life a girl said the same thing to me and I still got her and still fuck. So I know when that, that said on that show, I know that don't mean nothing. I take that with a grain of salt because I've seen more. I've seen worse turn out better. So I'm unfazed by a situation like that. It don't it won't even bother me in any way. Because I've made more from less. Come on, man. Positioning. You get better at all that finessing and positioning when you get in tougher situations. Dog, my best finesses and my best shit came from challenges. Like, challenging ass situations. Like, damn. Like, I'm looking back like, damn, I cooked. I didn't even think I was going to make it out of that. But I went for it anyway. I tested myself. And I like, damn. I was like, oh, shit. Or, or the test was, you know, I ain't test myself on purpose. But I might have got caught up or in a dumbass, sticky situation. And then I had to, I had to, you know. Step up. Are you talking about parents analogy a while back? Your pops would just say hello or have a good day, not crazy, but just a gesture. Some niggas don't even look straight up. Right. What makes me uncomfortable with my sexual size is the uncontrollables and self doubt. Self-doubt. Oh, that's the one I don't understand. I can understand impulses. What do you mean self-doubt? How do you apply? I understand what you're saying, but I can never add it to my game. Why? You have not You have not put yourself in situations in the field to apply it. I had to. Even if it wasn't spitting game with women. It might have been... I told you about the one job I had where we had to sell these reusable bags. And everybody else was so bad at selling them. I used to have a stack... I used to, I, I listen, I was so good at selling them things and, and talking to a customer and then, you know, finesse it at the end. I had to be, do it in so many different situations. I, I got so good at I used to have a stack of them joints because when, when you would sell something, you would write your name on it. So I would just put Ty, 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 Ty. Bro, I would have a stack, nigga. That shit wouldn't even fit in one hand. I used to have to hold it like this and it would be sitting at whatever register I was using. And the manager or the supervisor would, would, would show all the other people like, yo, like look how many Ty can sell. And then people, and then I, I, it would get so bad that people will wait till I go on my hour break or half an hour break. I come back from break and they may be like, look how much I sold. I'm like, man, you still ain't catch up to me. And I'm back. So I'm about to sell even more. But so many people would have a rough time selling them because let's say the customer come up and they would just say, would you like to buy one of our reusable bags? They're only $2. And the customer say, no, no, thank you. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> and I'm just listening. <laughs> and the register's so close, I'm just listening to them get, you know, rejected or fail to sell them. Sometimes this will literally happen. I will, uh, before I even sell one, right? This is this will make it a little bit harder for me and I still will get it off. If, if I, before I even tried to pitch it, the person next to me, already pitched it and just got rejected so then now i got i know i have to bring it up and my customer just heard somebody else say no so then now i gotta use that on top of that and now i gotta go against that and i consciously i'm thinking about this because i know i'm gonna bring it up anyway i know i'm gonna lead there i know i'm gonna position myself to get there niggas like me love challenges exact i still remember the, the drive i would get from having the finesse should make a Patreon video on this. I probably should, because there's a lot of game in the situation. And this is where you get creative with. This is where you start talking to people. Like, listen, 
I, I might not even sell it by selling it. I may say, I may wait till I build some rapport. I build some rapport with them, right? Then I made a video. On, what was the title of it on Patreon? I'm, I build some rapport with them, right? And then I say, so I let them know what my kind of personality is like. Then I go and I go, I say, listen, you know, I go, I whisper to them like I'm telling them, I'm giving, doing them a favor. The whole time I'm trying to sell them this bag. I whisper to them like I'm doing them a favor. I'm saying, listen, one of these bags, they going to rip before you even get out of the mall. You got a lot of stuff. You want one of these reusable bags. They only $2. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of time, and you could use it for whatever. You could put groceries in it. It would listen. I might. Oh my God! You you want to know what the real magic is? Let me pause the music. Let me be locking. You want to know what the real magic was? I'm not saying I did the whisper tactic all the time, but that might have been one of my funniest ones, one of my favorites. So I might I might play with it. Some some customers. Guess what? I might have had them so sold on our conversation, on our interaction. We laughing, we smiling, we interacting. That they sell themselves. I'm trying to tell them things about the bag, and then they go, no, go ahead. Go ahead and scan it, because I already know it's going to rip. I, listen, I don't even want like, Yup, I already know. Yup, just just go ahead and do it. I already positioned it where I made them think they want what I was about to give it to them, because they like me so much. This is what y'all got to understand, brother. I have seen people bend so much that... The confidence I have in a challenging situation is so insane. Y'all wouldn't even be able to see it. Y'all y'all wouldn't even be able to understand. I swear to God, y'all wouldn't be. Y'all would not be able to understand where it comes from. Because it comes from being in situations. And I'm not even just talking about the selling the bag at this point. I'm talking about like shit way beyond this. I'm talking about, let's say, getting caught with this and finessing out of that. I'm talking about messing with a chick and then I get her and her cousin or I get her and her close friend that she's known since fourth grade. I, all the wild, crazy shit that I've finessed in myself into, it really has gave me an undying confidence of like, anything is possible. <laughs> but, but, guess what? It, I'm not, it, all this shit ain't 100%. It still ain't, it still ain't. You know what I'm saying? You you don't become made by the rejection. Like the same, likewise, you don't become made by those successful situations. You just know you are the person who can do it. You just know you are. Like, whether it happens or not, I just know I can. I just know I am. I'm, I'm the guy that can do it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go for it anyway. I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? Push come to shove. I know how to. All right, bam, boom. All right, we working with something. Mm. Which better tie, deep or fat? What, bro, what? What, bro? What you talking about, man? What you talking about, man? You finished the arson, don't you want to see you put on the types of deuces? I don't know. That's a deep level. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. I'm trying to tell y'all. That's why I hate when niggas get on here and, and um you know they get super black pill whatever and they get super statistical and everything like one percent such and such percent of men get all the women and blah 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 this and blah, blah blah because all of that does is tell you that you can't and I'm not the kind of person who who thinks like that I'm not the kind of person who has lived a life if I looked if I lived my life looking at what I should not be able to do. Or what was unlikely possible for me to do. My life would be so different. My life would be so different if I only ever did which what was likely for me to do. If I ain't never take risks, chances, challenge myself, or bet on myself, or 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 act against the doubt, or act against the fear and the disbelief, or or act against the facts. I would not be the man who I am today. I would. It probably would have been safer for me to go to a trade school. Than be, try to become a YouTuber. And have a, a and make money off of this. It's, it's some of the low percentage of people that pass 100k subscribers. Or pass 200k or 300k. This was very. Uh, like, if I, like I'm trying to tell you. If I only went for what was possible or likely or what had the highest chance of being done, I would not be who I am today. 
I am beating the odds in the flesh. And I love that for me. Because I, I, I just I feel like I when if me and another person walk around in the world, we just see the world differently. I just I just view so many things as possible, man. And I really convinced myself of that through the shit that I have done and achieved. And and it and has allowed me to know myself in a much deeper level. Real shit. And I and it's just sad when you see somebody who don't believe that they can or doesn't know that they can. Because they don't even know. They just think they just strongly think they can't. They don't know. From watch the Allegory to K for the third time. Appreciate that, brother. I'm trying to that right now with my YouTube. It has to be with everything, man. It wasn't even just with YouTube. I honestly, the confidence to start a channel and, and think I can get it off the ground it, it may have came from other areas. It may have came from 1v3 and, and going at a group of women by myself. It may have came from um, getting a job that I wasn't even old enough to get or getting a woman I wasn't supposed to be old enough to get or um, getting in an AP class and, and getting a passing score on the exam. And, and you know, I barely studied or or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Or or I had like a, a C in the class. I'm telling you, I can give you so many examples of shit that should not have happened but did. Random example. We ain't got to make it by women and human interactions. In my AP biology class, I had like a C in the class. A C, right? We took the AP exam. Mind you, all the other students had, had might have had, mind you, it was people that had lower than C's or C's or whatever, but it was, it was the rare. Most of the kids in the class had like A's and B's. A's or high B's. But I was lazy. I didn't like, I was procrastinating. I didn't like doing homework, turning shit on time, whatever the case may be. Do you know when we took the AP exam, you can count on both hands how many people got a passing score, a three or higher, and I was one of them? Arab, all these students that had higher, my, my teacher specifically told me this. You, you would get a C or something on a test, and you went and took the exam and got your grade, or, or the, AP, the national AP exam and got your, your score. And these students was getting A's on the test we was taking. They take the AP exam. They get twos and ones. This is this is why this is what I mean. By by like I, you can never. I'm unpredictable. And I love being that way. And my I have shown myself through my own actions and my own belief in myself and my own audacity. Sometimes they don't even start with you. You have the results to back up who you think you are. Sometimes you just gotta have the audacity. Yeah, I got the audacity to go at her, to walk up to this this group of these five women. I got the audacity to to think I can get a girl like you, and you think you the shit, and you think I ain't shit. I got the audacity. I don't give a fuck, and I'ma still go for it. I got the balls to. Don't have to prove yourself to anyone but yourself. Exactly, but this is the point. This is the point. Trusting yourself and knowing yourself. And developing that through your own experiences, but it gotta start. It gotta start up here, bro. It gotta start up here, or else you wouldn't even try. For real, for real. That's the most honest answer. You know what I mean? And that shit start building up over time, and you'll be in it, yo. I'm telling you, that's poise. That's why I remember I showed you that Baki, um, that Baki clip where he was like, "You draw." He's like, "He's like, they say uh, such and such could beat you." And, you know, he's strongest man and blah, blah, blah. And he looked back and laughed. He said, my critics always, my critics always think, they, always something until I show them. Like, yo, it was something crazy. It was a crazy ass, bold ass statement he made, man. It was the perfect poise, man. Since I got all in-person classes this semester, I can say my social interaction has been better. Of course, man. Imagine you had you a job working cashier at a busy ass store. If you started that job awkward or nervous about human people, at least six months down the line, you should be able to, you know, you should definitely feel more comfortable. You start to write like, all right, like this ain't that big of a deal. It ain't blah, blah, blah. You start, it just start becoming easier and smoother. That's just natural. Like I said, I'm naturally introverted. 
But I just been in, I just been in situ so many oh my like bro. I'm telling y'all, I can without a doubt say I came at at least a thousand women in a week before, without a doubt. I, I without a doubt, I can say I at least came at a, at least a thousand women in one week before, With, without a doubt of shadow of a doubt in my mind. And it's like yo, that shit changes you when you do that over weeks and 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 weeks and, weeks and, weeks and years. That shit changes you, bro. You could be an introvert, you could be whatever. All that just just going and just going and just going, that shit changes your whole personality, bro. Not even your whole personality. It's not gonna change your personality, but it's like you mean talk to. No, came at, shot at. Not, hey, hey, how are you doing? And just walk past. I'm not counting that. Like dead ass. For any reason, come out of college and still be socially awkward. You just stay to yourself, man. Your comfort zone little as fuck. Everything makes you uncomfortable when your comfort zone is so small. <laughs> ah, yo. Oh my God, I just killed y'all with that one. Everything makes you uncomfortable when your comfort zone is so small. All time scoring record. No, I know it's people that definitely came at more women in a week than me than that. I think y'all don't understand. I think even somebody who heard me say that be like, bro, it's no way. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. Your town might your town might not be big enough. Your city might be too small. I, I don't think you understand. You know what I'm saying? Your only excuse is if you live in a, a, the 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 sticks and stones country type shit. You live on a farm. Once in a day. Let's break that down. Easily, easily can come at. Let's say, boom, getting on the bus, waiting at the bus stop in the morning. Boom, we had a transportation center. Then I might have three connecting buses. And one of them goes downtown to a train station. This is this is or this is on the way to school. This is in the morning. Then when I get to school, boom. There are eight hours around whatever however many people. Boom, school's out. Then we go to the let out. High school right across the street. All girls high school. Top of the center. Six or seven, eight high schools all all there at the let out at the end of the day. And people be sitting there for like at least two hours. The let, that shit don't really even die down to like 4 30, 5 o'clock. Really, four o'clock it might die down a little bit or something like that, but it's still like a lot of people there. Then, boom, you on the first bus again, which might be new people you never seen before, new chicks or whatever. Then you standing up, you know, on the bus. Then this one standing here, then you sit down. Then she look at you some kind of way, then you like, oh, like, I'm telling you. Boom, each joint connection might create a new separate whatever person. Cause then this bus might go that way. Then it's like, yo, public transportation, you you just But then I might be going to work. Boom. Then the buses I catch to work, whoever I see on the on the bus rides or at the transportations that I wait to that connect me to the next bus to go to work. Then I get to work. Then whoever worked there, then who the customers that's coming in. I'm at the register, so I'm at the face of the store. I'm not in the back folding clothes. I'm not in, I'm not in the, you know, in the fit room saying, Oh, here's here's your um you know, here's here's your fitting room number and pass it off. I'm at the register. So I'm I'm with this motherfucker for probably five to ten minutes at least. Unless they got three items. Then then we uh, then we got the way home. The bus rides home. Then then you at work. You might get to work at this time. And you and you catch mixed shifts. You got the people that's leaving their shift, you got the people that's coming to their shift. Why are you still at work? Cause you might have a shit like say like a um one to ten or let's say you're at school that day five to ten. You coming in? Some people leaving at six. Some people leaving at seven. Some people coming in at five at the same time. Do y'all see how this could easily add up to a hundred and ten? If you if you said a, a thousand in a week, right? First of all, I don't think you can count. Okay, no, actually, actually, that's about right. Let's say let's say a thousand a week is divided by seven. 
Bro, that could easily be 110 in a day. Easily. Nigga spawning to the towers is crazy. I don't know, man. This is why I like, man. You start learning. I ain't gonna lie. It's, it's been sometimes, like way back, right? Before I was just like consistently sniping, where I might have walked past something. I'm like, damn, I should have came at it. And after that happened a couple times, that's when you start to develop that I, I'm shooting right here, right now. You stop letting shit pass by you. This is shit that you only start to develop when you mentally say to yourself, like, damn, I should have came. Man, damn. You ain't, as a man or as a person who goes for what they want, you ain't gonna let that happen too many times. You ain't going, damn, I should have. Like, you ain't gonna do that too many times. At least I didn't. At least I learned not to. Quickly. Damn, like, I ain't never going. Because I don't know if she work here. Do she work there? Do she even go? Like, she might not even be from this area of the city. Like, it's too much going on, man. You could literally see somebody one time and never see them again. Bro, I'm talking about even in college, right? I think my college population was 17,000, 18,000, something like that, right? So, every time I go to this party, like I said, when I, when I, when I was a freshman, right? My one of the mentors I got through this program, he was on a football team. He was starting. He was a, he was a kappa. He, you know, for fraternity and all that. Me and him got real cool. And I actually found out I knew his cousin from somewhere somewhere else I used to live. So we we clicked real fast. So I used to get in these parties and go to these places, whatever the case may be. And I'm, when I tell you, dog, it used to be a chick uh, uh, every time I never saw in my life, whether it be on campus in in the food joints and in, in the gym, in in classrooms. Yo, I remember. I remember I came at this one girl one time on Instagram, right? Rarely I ever did, but this is why I did it, right? Because I thought she was this one girl that I had a, a, a bio lab with. It was already a girl in there that I was pl I was going at and, and bagging. So I wasn't going to bag her at the same time that me and this other... And she also sat over there and the girl I wanted sat in front of me. So I already had the motion I wanted. But I still was like, oh, damn, she tough. So like... You know, when I'm done with this, I'm like, I ain't gonna lie. When I was sniping, I, I, I be having, this is what I be saying. I be having like projects on pending. And if you ain't on some sniper shit, you ain't on some slayer shit, you don't understand. Like you, you put this shit on layaway. You like, all right, I already know. Boom, boom, bang, boom. And, and they all might be in the same room. And then quarantine happened. I'm like, damn. <laughs> and the crazy part is I end up seeing a girl on Instagram who I thought was her. And the fucked up part is when I DM the girl about she's like, no, that's not me. And then I already had bagged her. So then she was like, oh, well, are you disappointed that I'm not the girl that you thought I was? Finesse that right out. Cause I, I fucked up. I, I literally, I'm telling y'all chat, when I, these bitches could have been twins. Maybe I kind of forgot her face because you know, a month or two went by in quarantine, whatever. Maybe I forgot. But it, it literally was like, yo, I found a joint from my lab. And I ain't said to her immediately when I bagged her. But it was like we had already texted on the gram a little bit, DM, got a number, whatever. And then I ended up saying it to her later. And then she was like, are you disappointed that I'm not the girl that you thought I was? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm even happier that you are. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know what I said, bro. But I just remember I was like, oh, shit. Like. And to this day, I never saw that girl from that lab ever again in my life. And that was my first time ever meeting her. Or seeing her in the and being in the space with her. This is when you start to realize, bro. Like you after you be shooting, you really sniping on some shit, you stop letting opportunities fly, bro. Bro, you you just go, you just go. You don't contemplate, you don't hesitate. Cause you might never see this chick again. And then you sit there like, damn, you don't wanna go home and think about that, bro. You don't. You might not even give a fuck. You I, I'm honestly I had probably came at so many women by the next day or the day after that that I wouldn't even have to think about it too much. But still, it just, it wasn't a feeling that set right with, with me even for that short period of time. Can you give a basic breakdown slash walkthrough 
on persuasion, something else like the initial story example. Um, I'm I'm having a hard time figuring out what you're trying to say with that question. Like, you saying break down the situation, like how it might have went from the customer or with the customer? No, remember, remember I showed y'all. Remember I showed y'all the 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 video the girl sent me when she was like, your name all over the wall. Because not only would I get them to buy the bag, I would get them to put the reviews online and, and, and tell them, like, they, it's, it's very important in my job. So I had a lot of customers. My name, bro, I'm telling you, I dominated that wall. Because what they would do is, is they would print those out and put them in the wall in the back of the uh, store. Hold on. Let me find this, bro. And she sent me a video a day I wasn't even at work. She was like, yo, why your name all over the joint? She DM'd it to me on Instagram. Let me show y'all what they, what they would say, bro. And I showed y'all that before. I'm gonna bring this right back up. Just to show y'all, if this is how they describe me, just imagine how I was reacting and act, interacting with them one-on-one. -on -one. And what's important and how it led to finessing the bag. What's the fundamental behind that persuasion? I, I'm gonna show you. I got his name started right, so many look. times. That's what I know. I got his name started so many times. And she only showed two of them, right? That's what I know. Ty was very nice. Hold on. Ty was very helpful. That's only two of them they showed, right? Listen. This is days like they would replace him every couple of days. That's 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 what y'all don't get. That's what I'm saying. Like it wasn't like our those two times they sit there, they will replace them weekly. So each week it was still like, damn, like, yo, you only here Saturday and Sunday. You don't even work. You don't even work here five, four days a week, 40 hour work weeks. You only here 16 hours. You know, you only here from on Saturdays and Sundays. But still it was like. So let me tell you, very nice and helpful. So I, I'm not, I'm not gonna remember what I said, script for script, word for word, right? But that's because each each time I, it might have been different. The intro line be like, intro might have always been, "Hey, how are you doing? Did you find everything all right?" And then that may start, that may spark something. They may say something like, you know, um, actually, yeah, I did, I did. I was actually shopping for my niece, or you know, they say some random shit like that, like, like. They say, or they may say, let's say they keep it simple. Um, no, I found everything I was looking for. You know, it was, it was an easy time. and Okay. I may even be bold enough. This is where you start learning to test the water in interactions. I may even be bold. This is a reach, though. This is a, a bold risk. And you sometimes have to take risks, calculated risks, to get what you want. Because guess what? I know if I don't take a calculated risk then this interaction is too professional. I never break ice. I never I never get beyond just a sales cashier. So I may say something like, I may look at what they're buying. And I may say, what is a, what is a lady doing with, uh, whatever, let's say she had coffee mugs. I'm like, or the coffee mug might say best dad ever or something like that. Like, I might make a guess. I may make a I make a guess. It's a calculated risk. It may be a guess or a bold statement. I may say something like, you know, well, what is the lady doing buying blank blank blank? And I, I I gotta say it with a smile. I gotta say it real cool. Like I gotta say it real calm because I don't want to be. I don't want to reach too hard and I want to be too aggressive. I'm like, what is the lady doing with you know? I'm kind of doing it like not too judgmental, but I'm curious. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I'm trying to portray. And she may say, well, actually, you know, it's, it's for my, my, you know, blah, 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 and da, 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 da. Okay, so you being thoughtful. Now the whole conversation is automatically in a new territory. All because of this calculated risk. No, I tell you, you can't say no shit like, you can't say no shit like that in 2023. You can't. Don't say we can't. Because the person next to me might have had the same customer and still not say that. But I know how to test water. I know how to take a risk. I'm, I'm like... I know how to deliver it too. 
So they say, oh, oh no, I'm just actually buying it for blah, 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 and da, 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 da. So then I go, um, that gives me more. I'm, I'm always getting more. This you gotta learn. You're always getting more, the more the conversation goes on. So she may say, oh, it's actually, like, I, mind you, I'm not even, I, it's not even direct to knowing that I'm on something like, damn, you real pretty, blah, blah, blah. No, the, I'm just charming her with my personality. You know, what is the lady doing with things? Or, or let's say, um, I may, let's, let's reword that and let's say, let's put it in a guest question form. I may say, um, cause even the first one is not a really question. It's a statement. Like, what are you doing buying this? Like, what the heck? And it prompts an answer. But the question may be something like, um, I may say something like, you know, is it someone's birthday? Like, uh, like these, it don't really look like you shopping for yourself. But guess what? Why is this bold? Why is this risky? Because as a, as a cashier, I'm just supposed to scan the items and do my job. I'm really overreaching. Like, I'm overstepping my position. I'm making it more personal. But why do I know? Why am I doing this? Because even if I know they have this professional expectation of me behind this role, I'm fucking human. Now, don't get me wrong. There are certain positions like... I don't want to hear a joke from my lawyer. <laughs> I don't I don't want my lawyer to joke like you might get life. Like I, I don't want to hear that joke. But my lawyer may show his personality. He may say something like, you know, are oh, we gonna spank this easily? I had five cases like this. I'm like, this is my fucking guy. That's my dog. I may love that per like you know what I'm saying? Do y'all get what I'm saying? Like it's certain ways that you could tie your personality into a natural interaction and it just it's 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 woo. It's like it's a sweet spot, like bam. So I'm 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 doing that with that customer, right? So we done broke. Now they telling me about their family. Now they telling me about this, and I'm like I may even throw some out there. Well, we have some nice bling bling, but you did pick the best item over there. So this is the helpful part. Like I'm I'm you know letting them know I'm not. I'm, I'm also keeping it still helpful and beneficial, but a little bit personal, not too much personal. I'm not probing. I'm not I'm not making them feel like I'm picking. I just did something bold and I, I I pulled back a little bit, then I push again and I pull back. It's like a it's like a it's like a play. It's like you playing, you feeling, right? And then by by the time we get to the bag, you know, I'm already displayed my personality, I already, you know, whatever. And then um I get to go on, I'm like it, it almost seems like the bag is an interruption to the, the flow of the combo. Let me not, I, I might jump in, I might say, let me not forget, let me not forget, because this is really going to help you out. We got these reusable bags, right? It's not that I'm trying to sell them to them. Can you buy our bags because when I sign my name on it, it's going to help? I'm not doing that. Let me let me look out for you, Rico. We got these reusable bags. The ones we originally had, they be ripping. You know, <laughs> you might not even make it out the door. And then they laugh like, <laughs> so with these reusable bags, they, they only $2. You know what I'm saying? They only, you know, whatever. And the bigger one is three dollars, but you ain't gotta go big. You ain't gotta go big. You ain't gotta ball out like that. And they may say, "Oh, it's three dollars. I got it." Now I done tempted them by joking, like you know what I'm saying, like, "Oh, you don't want to go big like that." You know what I'm saying, like two dollars. But listen, guess what? You know how many people couldn't sell or add that on there because so many, so many people like, why would I spend two dollars? Like, why, why do I need the bag? Oh yeah, the person wrote and funny on there. I'm going to put my personality into the interaction. I, I, I'm i testing the water. But if you're scary, you're too scared to say something, you're never going to be able to build some type of personal connection and rapport with anybody. Because you ain't you ain't going, if it's any ice, you ain't going to ever break it. Neither of y'all going to break it because y'all two scary ass motherfuckers that got y'all guard up. Two hours of hustle. No, I don't care, gang. Just get it. Right. But you don't know how many. Listen, bro, I'm telling you. My two dollar, three dollar bag. You know, you don't know how many people I see. Might have been right next to me, and the customer go, ah, "No, I don't need it. It's fine." And then they just get instantly get rejected, or they get to selling it, or they get to selling it, and the person say, "No, no, 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 it's all right. Let's just hurry up and get me out of here." When I really seen like my poise work craziest, I remember I had this one customer. It was like an early Saturday. She was coming in for a return. Now, anybody here ever worked retail? Oh my God, y'all know. 
if somebody's doing like a return or something and they don't have the receipt, what do we know about these customers? <laughs> they always the hard, they always have the hardest heads. They always have like the they always be on bad time. They, you just know it. Return. You be like, oh my. You you just know they coming on on bad timing. You know they probably uh, Karen they in a bad mood. They about to try to fight you and haggle for. You know it. And I'm talking about listen. I come in. Well, I was already there. She come in. She talking. She already arguing with the manager. <laughs> she didn't even come to me straight. She went straight to the manager. And then he said, okay, blah, blah, blah. You can go scan over there. But they just damn near got done arguing. And mind you, my manager, my manager, gave, it was a gay dude, right? So you know he gave her like slick attitude. They like arguing. Ma'am, you're going to have to. Absolutely not, ma'am. You're not going to talk to me. Like he talking to her like this. So they like damn near having a heated argument. Like, they damn near going back and forth, bro. So he's like, well, you can go to Ty, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? He's like, all right, Ty, just, you know, blah, 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 bang, bang, boom. So I'm like, oh, shit, right? So I'm already hearing they slides, side hearing they conversation, right? So I'm like, all right, she's in a bad mood. She's, you know, real attitude, blah, blah, blah. She come over, throw the stuff on the table, cross her arms. And I'm listening. <laughs> Like, I'm laughing and smiling right now, right? I had the same face, dog. I'm like, I got like this little grin to me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm already knowing. Like, I didn't laugh. Like, I'm not trying to laugh at her. I'm just smiling. I'm just happy. I'm I'm already knowing this going to help shift the mood because I'm in a good mood. It, it's hard to be mad at somebody that's happy. She would have been mad at my manager if he would have been smiling and happy because they was just arguing. So, it's, but I'm just a random person, so I'm just smiling. I'm just, I'm like, hello, how are you? Like, I, I'm already, I try to break her whole anger with my with my introduction and shift it. And I might have said something to her like, you know, I understand that didn't go too well, but you know, hopefully we can turn it out to be something better. And when I tell you that made her whole, like by the end of the interaction, I come to find out she was like some uh, recruitment manager for some like tech company, like dog. She was really a, like somebody. She's like, here, she's like, how old are you? I was like, 17. She's like, okay, when you turn 18 in the summer, give me a call, you know what I mean, blah, blah, blah. You know, ended up giving me a whole opportunity Left happy, whole mood changed. We we all whole conversation opened up. She's like, oh, I actually, you know, my my son and my daughter are just going to college and blah blah blah. We start talking about my whole life and what I'm doing and and she cut why? Cause I was already in a good like you gotta you can really use your whole poise, your whole interaction, your whole engagement to change how a person feeling, even knowing that they coming in mad. And I done seen this. I brought and done this so many times. And it's like, yo, coming from that, you, social skills is everything. Even when it comes to customer service and you talking to the other person, you arguing with them, yo, fuck you, why, why, why this ain't that? I know it's a certain way to handle people to get what you want. And I know how to handle them. And professional or personal or whatever the interaction may be. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. And that's the bottom line of, of what people don't get with the differences. Don't y'all realize, chat, even, even in a bank, all this shit is personal at the top. Don't you know all these motherfuckers know each other? Everybody knows everybody. It's it. The world is already small. It only gets smaller and smaller at the top. You look up this motherfucker coming back into this this dealership, this store. You getting treated like a st a stranger, finessed and and robbed. This person gets a phone call when this specific item comes in. They have personal numbers. They, they talk on the side. They go to dinners together. And not beyond the business relationship. This is, I look out for you, you look out for me. And they have access to things you don't, not just because of the capital they have. Because there are other people with capital. I mean, I think Andrew Tate made this example when he was talking about Bugatti. He's like, yo, you, you don't just have enough money for a Bugatti and just go get one. You gotta know somebody that knows somebody. You gotta like, 
this is con like bro connection this shit rules the world bro it it does it ain't just statistically well if you're 6'2 and you're good looking then 99% of women will like you more duh tell me something I don't know how do you leverage that how do you capitalize off that even if you're not you don't have any of those automatic qualifications. Come on now. Everyone, know, my mom always says everyone knows someone. I'm talking you, dog. You realize that crazy? Like everybody knows somebody knows everybody knows somebody, bro. Everybody knows something. The world is so big and so small at the same. I'm telling you, brother. I'm telling you, so small, man. And this is why how you interact. And this is the last thing I'm gonna leave y'all with because I'm gonna have to end stream real soon. The last thing I'm gonna leave y'all with, this is why when you act a certain way. Okay, let's say this. Your name is Joe. You work a job at some random store with Tim and Mary. You don't even know this. But you were you were disrespectful to Tim and Mary. You were assholes to both of them. You disrespected them, and they don't like you, right? But not because y'all just don't get along, but because you you just are a dickhead. Mary's father, or Mary's connected to Tony Montana, Playboy Cardi, Drake, and ASAP Rocky. Now I'm not saying. They give her money or whatever, but that's her cousin on her dad's side, and one's her uncle, and blah blah blah. Not even knowing, she could have showed you love, helped you out, or even with Tim. Tim's Tim grew up with Meek Mill, or Tim grew up with blah blah blah, or whatever. And you built that bad relationship with Tim. You already exited yourself out the door with those other relationships. Vice versa. You great with them, they put you in those doors. Not like you need them or you ask them for it, but yeah. Somebody clipped that and somebody said it as the end of the stream clip for the people. And you know, because I'm about to end stream right now. And I love y'all. Those are to the moon to Saturday. We leave in the solar system. Yeah, dude.